finally got a clear night after about two weeks of clouds, rain, and all kind of crazy stuff. Actually got a few faint clouds tonight, but I just said to come out. Um, I'm going after a target I tried before. This is a Whirlpool Galaxy, but I'm trying a different light pollution filter. I have the Orion Ultra filter that I got from Hop On Scientific that I hear a lot of good things about. So I'm gonna try this filter tonight. And I'm also using, uh, right now I'm using, um, what a PH2 guide is doing a star calib uh, calibration right now for before it does all the guiding. You can see right here it's picked, it got a star and it's actually doing the cal calibration steps. It's like E step eight of seven. It's actually moving around trying to calibrate everything. But I'm using uh, Backyard EOS to control my Canon camera tonight. And actually purchased the software. I'm just actually using the free trial, free trial until it runs out. And I got like three more days on it. And the software's pretty cool because you can actually run everything automated. Uh, only thing I can see right here, my CCD temperature is about 91 degrees because it is warm out here tonight. It's about 80 degrees. But as you see right here, I can set all my, everything about the camera. Um, how long I want the photos to be, ISO settings, uh, just everything. The time and the histogram right here, you can stretch your image. And I'm still learning about the software a little bit, but um, I'm going to remote desktop with a uh, team viewer to my other laptop in the house. And I'm going to close up this uh, box right here. See, I got this box. It's actually a rubber made tub. Put your laptop in here. Cut a few holes for the USB cables to come out the side. Then you just put this top over and cover it up. Keeps everything off of it and the do. And over here, um, I actually got a few extra pieces of gear. I got a douche heater strip right here on the actual uh, eight inch scope. And on my guide scope, I got a um, do heater strip right here too. And I'm using, um, got this off of Cloudy Nights Classified. This is the Orion. Uh, dew zapper so it's the dew heater to keep the dew off of um, the glass and everything you know it just keeps a little bit above ambient temperature where it keeps the dew and everything off of it so you got controls right here so you can control up to four devices I'm only using two and I got uh, my power supply zip tied on the leg right here too but so far seems to be working pretty well uh, I use the pole master for polar alignment I polar align this scope in about maybe three minutes this time it was real real fast but um, that's the setup, and I'm about to go inside and see how this Whirlpool Galaxy comes out. Oh, I forgot to mention I have a Canon camera now. This is the Canon uh, EOS Rebel. It's a T4i. I got this off of Clay, uh, Facebook Classifieds, just the body. The guy was selling just the body on here, so I got everything uh, set up right here, right into the back of the scope with the focal reducer right here. And then hopefully this light pollution filter actually do pretty good tonight. To find out because I have a lot of light pollution in my area. Right, I'm back inside. I'm using a uh, Team Viewer to remote connect to the laptop that's outside. See right here, I'm doing um, 40 photos at 90 seconds each, and I'm using uh, ISO of 1600. And the CCD temperature did drop down to 82, so that's a little bit better. But uh, it is hot outside tonight. But the uh, first picture just came in, and you can see. Uh, the Whirlpool Galaxy right here. I did stretch the histogram, which is right over here, just a little bit so it could show up, just so, just for this purpose. And I'm using that new Orion uh, light pollution filter. So everything does, on here it looks a little bit of bluish, but um, that's what people say, but you gotta adjust all that with your post-processing. But if I reset the histogram back, you can see everything is darker and hopefully I can, it can bring out some details of this galaxy, this first time I'm trying it. And my guiding is not the best, I mean, it's still, I mean, declination is down to 0.57, but RA is still at uh, 1.09. It seems like this mount, I'm getting a lot of RA um, corrections a lot of times. And I'm trying to figure out what, what can I adjust uh, where I can get everything a lot smoother. Uh, those are my numbers right here for the aggressiveness and the hysteresis and minmo settings. And declination is not that bad, but the RA is always a lot of adjustments. I'm trying to balance everything. And it is some clouds out tonight, so I'm hopefully that uh, the Lobestar X2 will keep everything locked in just right as far as uh, guiding. But um, yeah, I just gotta do some more research on um, the guiding parts, trying to smooth out these blue lines right here. But I did do the calibration, but I'm not sure if it's dealing with balancing or um, backlash or just the gears. So I'm gonna try to do some research, see what I can do to get that a lot smoother where this bullseye, where the red dot stays more in the center on the bullseye for guiding like I see a lot of people have their set up for. All right, I've been doing some reading on the uh, PHD2 auto guiding. 
looking at a couple of videos I found on YouTube and um, made a few adjustments and the numbers went down a little bit. Uh, RA is at 1.18. It was at 1.05, but um, moving a little bit, but a little bit smoother now. It was a lot more aggressive movements uh, with the blue lines and some of the red ones here, but it's starting to settle on down a little bit. So learning all this stuff, like I said, I'm a newbie with um, the auto guiding and just the whole automation process of astrophotography. I'm learning a whole lot. Like I said, it's another language to me, but it's fun, so I'm trying to stick with it.